to another edition of the UTRGV Baseball Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg, and this is the one and only head coach of the UTRGV Baseball Team, Mr. Manny Manchana. Good morning, Jonah. Some good alliteration right there. Yes, absolutely, like always. <laughs> so, Coach, uh, you're coming off a uh, two and two record since the last time we spoke to you. Uh, one and two against New Mexico State. It went over in Carnival Word last night. The New Mexico State series was the start of uh, whack play. Uh, what did you think of the way your team played against New Mexico State? I thought Friday night, Jonah, um, we played well. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, our starting center fielder, uh, Colon Carr, and our starting shortstop, Caden Ross, all uh, ran into each other uh, right around the fourth inning. Um, and they both suffered concussions. Um, so they've been out since then. They're going to be out this weekend. Uh, but overall, Friday night, uh, uh, we pitched well. Um, we hit the ball well. Our offense was going. Um, and we were able to win. Um, you know, Saturday, same thing. Um, we had to lead our bullpen uh, kind of. Uh, floundered a little bit. Um, we gave up the lead, and it was the same thing on um, uh, on, the, on Sunday. But uh, overall, I thought Friday night was really well. Um, we need to do some things in the bullpen um, to make sure that uh, we don't blow leads. Um, but they played hard. Um, I thought we should have won two out of the three games. Unfortunately, we did not. So we have to get back to the uh, drawing board and keep working. Well, you mentioned uh, Friday's pitching, Johnny Gonzalez. You know, if he never had to face Brent Sakurai, he would have had a no hitter. He was, uh, he was really, really good, um, and he's been really, really good every Friday. Um, you know, this Friday he dominated even though he felt, uh, he felt behind a lot of hitters, but that just kind of goes to, uh, to show what kind of stuff he has. Um, so, you know, he's a legitimate Friday night guy. Um, we feel we can win every Friday night, Jonah, and that's always good. Um, you win that Friday night game, and then all you have to do is, you know, win one of the next two games, and you win the weekend. Um, so uh, I, th I thought our team, um, hopefully it's a, they learned from it. Um, we, we, we talked about it a little bit, the importance of winning those, those weekends, because it's tough to win on the road. You have to win at home. Uh, so we'll, we'll see this weekend when we go up to uh, Chicago State. You managed to get a similar starting pitching performance yesterday. Ryan Jackson through the first seven innings. It's the same story. If he never had to face Eddie Gonzalez, he would have had a no-hitter. He threw really, really well. I think, uh, I don't know, he struck out about eight or something, um, one walk. Um, he, he was really in command pretty much the entire night, uh, seven strong innings. And then um, in the eighth inning, they've got an in, they got an infield hit, and then they hit some hard balls and found some holes. Um, and then Andrew Garcia came in, did a nice job. And um, our offense was really, really good uh, in the clutch, uh, coming back from behind to help us win the game. Now Garcia didn't really throw much on Saturday. He went five innings. Uh, through 60 some odd pitches. So is that part of the reason he came in yesterday to get a little extra work in? Yeah, anytime, you know, you have a, an arm like uh, Garcia and he only threw, uh, I think it was 61, 62 pitches on Saturday. He was, he was fresh. So we were going to use him um, um, either one or two innings, even if the score was 10 nothing. Um, it was his bullpen day. He was fresh um, and we were able to uh, utilize him and he came in in a tough spot and, and got the job done for us. So Garcia comes in and he gets he gets the final outs there. You're able to get the win over Incarnate Word. Is that big to be able to see your offense rally back in the eighth inning of that game to at, right after giving up the lead? Yeah, it's it's always good, especially um, heading into a conference weekend. You want to win the midweek. Um, you know the guys feel pretty good about themselves. A lot of confidence being able to to, to come back. Uh, we had to lead the entire game. They tied it. You know then they took the lead in the uh, in the top of the eighth. We were able to come back, um, regain the lead in the bottom of the eighth, and then Andrew came in the ninth and just went two, three. Um, so it's always good to win in heading into uh, conference play um, just for the fact of confidence and the guys are feeling pretty good about themselves. Uh, yesterday we saw Jose Garcia in left field. I know that's his position he's played before, uh, just not here. So uh, what went into the decision to decide to put him out there for the first time this year? Well, we're really shorthanded right now, Jonah. Obviously, with our starting center fielder and starting shortstop out, um, there's been some adjustments um, that we've needed to make and we have to make at Chicago State until they both come back. Um, and, you know, Maito's a very good uh, athlete. Um, he's played some outfield before, obviously. He's very good offensively. Um, on top of that, it's always nice to give him a rest in the middle of the week after catching, um, you know, the entire series against New Mexico State. Um, that's 36 innings. That's a lot of baseball. Um, so uh, we moved him and left. And again, he's played there before. There's nothing new to him. Did a good job. You know, caught everything that was hit his way. Um, and what chances are we might do that uh, for at least one game um, when we go up to Chicago State. Mm -hmm. Maybe even more until again we have to um, wait to see when Cole and Caden get back. But until then, we have to make some adjustments. Um, and we're definitely uh, shorthanded. 
Well, some of the adjustments with Austin Oaks behind the plate yesterday, you've had Corey Davis in center twice, Manny Laredo once, and honestly, they all look fine out there. You know, um, catching the routine fly ball at this, at this level, it's fine. Everybody can, anybody can do that. The, the thing is the jumps, the balls, and the gap, the tough plays. Um, and Cole was very good at that. Obviously, uh, we're not going to get the same uh, results when other guys are there. Um, but as far as a routine play, you're absolutely right. They've made the routine play. But sometimes you need to make, make the great play um, to help you win. Um, and again, um, you know, as long as they make the routine play, that's which they should at this level, uh, that helps. Um, but Maida, you know, he runs very well, um, and he played a, a good left field. So, um, again, gives us another piece uh, so we can move around. And then late in the game, we, you know, we pretty much used everybody that we had in the, uh, in the dugout. Um, so we brought in Corey Davis. You know, we brought him in from center to first base, and we moved, you know, the pieces around as best we could um, with what we had. Um, and the results were, were positive. Uh, you mentioned, of course, uh, Ross Holdout also at shortstop. So you, you've used Isaac Gonzalez as a starter the last two games. And he's gotten a couple of hits and been involved in the scoring. But more importantly, his defense looked really good. You know, we need, we need to play defense. And that's what we liked about Caden um, because all three of those guys were in competition all fall um, and, and now in the spring. Um, but def defensively, um, you know, Caden um, was a little bit better at the time. Um, Obviously, uh, the best hitter out of them all three is probably another freshman, Gomez. Uh, but Isaac has really done well. Um, they've had their chance to, to start. Um, we gave the chance to Isaac in the couple games he's been in there. He's played solid defense. And as you said, got a couple of hits that uh, when we needed him. Um, but that's a position where you have to play defense, Jonah, and you have to make the routine play. Scott Mercer at third uh, yesterday, he made some sparkling defensive plays had a diving uh, stop at one point got to his feet and his arm strength is off the charts right now we've um, we've had Scott in the program now we got him from a junior college this is his senior year we had him for two years um, and there is no doubt um, that last night's game was his best overall game uh, in the two years we've had him as you mentioned he made some great plays uh, on defense made the routine play on defense um, but also offensively um, was big for us, um, and he was the guy that got the game-winning uh, base hit to help us take the lead. So overall, I think it was Scott's uh, best game in the two years as far as defense and offense, putting it together. Um, and he's come a long way since last year. Um, I mean, a long, long ways. He's now 6 for 10 against Incarnate Word. Any chance you could convince him that all the remaining opponents are Incarnate Word also? Exactly. We're going to have to hypnotize <laughs> him and, hey, well, you're playing Incarnate Word. But you know what? He's been, um, after uh, uh, Garcia, and Coyasso, um, he's probably been our most consistent hitter. And he's come up big uh, this year for us in clutch situation. I think this is his second game winning hits um, that he's had this year. But um, he's been, after those two guys, he's been our most consistent hitter. Um, and again, yesterday was a great showing with him. He not only made the routine play, but as you said, made some great plays. Um, you know, coming in on the ball, diving down the line, getting up and throwing the guy out. And on top of that, to get the, uh, I think he had three hits yesterday, including the game winner. So. Um, you know what? Uh, great all-around game um, from Scott Mercer. Uh, bullpen Sunday. We come in, uh, New Mexico State is busy piling up runs, and then George Lamb not only stops the bleeding, but he goes two and a third hitless, and then Justin Quinones comes in two perfect innings. Uh, the bullpen was locked down on Sunday. Yeah, um, it, it's a shame our, our bullpen couldn't do it on Saturday because we had a two, you know, when we, we took Andrew out of the game, we had a two-nothing lead. Um, and we just didn't get it done, but they bounced back on Sunday and they did very, very well. Um, you know, and Lamb right now is um, is working his way into the role. He's pro he might be our closer. Um, he uh, has very good numbers. Um, you know, he can, I think he has a mentality and the ability um, to do that. Um, but he's young. He came back from Tommy John, just got a few innings last year. And he's really slowly progressed into the uh, the player that we saw. Um, in high school and kind of envisioned that he would become. So um, his numbers are really, really good. And again, he's, uh, he's in competition to be the, uh, the guy that we bring in the ninth inning to shut the door and, and give us the win. UTRGV visits Chicago State this weekend, Friday at 3, Saturday at 3, and then Sunday at 11 a.m. for a nice uh, early morning contest. You get your coffee out. and uh, <laughs> what, what time is the wake-up call for an 11 a.m. game? Yeah, I might not even go to sleep. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, be, because of travel, obviously, we had to start just to make sure we get the game in. Um, we want it to be safe. So uh, both their coach and I agreed that we should start at 11, make sure we get all nine innings in, um, and still give us enough time 
um, to get to the airport, especially a city like Chicago where there's just so much traffic and the airports are, are just so crowded. Um, and when we're trying to check in a party of 30, you know, 33, <laughs> 34, it takes a while. Um, so we changed the starting time from noon to 11, but you're right. Um, definitely uh, quite early uh, a wake up call. Well, that's why it's good. You got the 3 p.m. games earlier, you know, the first two games. That way you'll be able to get to bed kind of early, I guess. That helps. That helps. Obviously, if it was a six or seven o'clock game on Saturday, that's a little tougher. But again, you know, it's uh, it's the same for both teams. Jonah. Um, and like we tell the guys, listen, uh, no excuses. All we need, uh, the prerequisite is just a field. So the weather, uh, the environment, whether the field is good or bad, doesn't really, really matter. Just give us a field and let's play baseball. Well, make sure you check it out on GoUTRGV.com. We'll have ways for you to follow the game. And, of course, the post-game recaps will head up there as well. UTRGV back home the following week against North Dakota. We'll talk about that next week. He's Manny Mentrana. He's the head coach of the UTRGV baseball team. My name is Jonah Goldberg. We'll see you next week. But until then, get your V's up.